Brian. Hi. How are you? Hi. I'm your teacher today. Hello. <laughs> can you hear me clearly? Yes, very clearly. Okay, good. I can hear you well. And the image yeah. is very clear. Yeah. Okay, good. So you're located in Perth? Yes, I live in Perth. Okay. And what, what uh, if you don't mind telling me, what do you do in Perth? Okay, so uh, I, I'm a business owner. So, okay. Yeah, so the business is about international student agency. So I introduce students, international students to the schools in Australia, uh, including all the English schools, uh, TAFE and universities. Okay, wow. Yeah, I think uh, the trend of education would be more about online classes. I think. Yeah, yeah. so not only just like university courses, a lot of English course and uh, vocational courses. Uh, if, if there is no uh, requirement of placement training, then everything would be go online. Okay. So what I'd like you to do is maybe just talk about your future. You can make it today or you can make it this week or you can make it for the whole year. It uh, doesn't really matter, but try to use some other forms of indicating the future. Just do not use will. Okay. There is a birthday party uh, in the evening tonight. Okay. I will be attending that birthday party with my friend. Uh, we are having hot pot with uh, the famous Taiwanese stinky tofu. Right, okay. Uh, before that, before the party, uh, I will be working for the whole time, I guess. Now you broke the rule. You've used I real said I will. But a couple of years were very good. So keep going. A couple more things. I plan to reply to about 20 emails today. Okay. <laughs> uh, and I'm, uh, yeah, I'm uh, ready. Um, I mean, I'm messaging a lot of students, like maybe about 50 students. Okay. Right? As well. Okay. Yeah, so I hope that everything is going to be done by six o'clock. Like I noticed you said, uh, we are having a hot pot tonight. I can't remember the exact sentence. Um, that sounds a lot softer. Listen, listen, if you listen to it, we will have a hot pot tonight. You can feel that's a little harsh. Yes. Now listen to this. I'm reflecting it back to you. We are having a hot pot tonight. Um, notice how it's more direct and it's more so and it's softer. It invites your listener in to participate in what you are going to do uh, in a softer way by using the continuous. So a lot of um, a lot of international English students don't usually use that, and um, they'd be better off to use it more often. Um, uh, so, so for example, if I say I intend to do something or I'm doing something, does that mean that uh, there is different percentage that I will do it? Like oh, when I say, yeah, yeah. They're going to is pretty set as 100% because it means that you've already decided it. Intend yeah. is very strong because if you use a word like I intend to, I plan to, I want to, um, something like that, just by using that word, it's very strong. And then you're using it with an infinitive, the infinitive of purpose, which fulfills the uh, first verb, intend to go, for instance. However, intend to doesn't mean you're going to do it. Yes. So in terms of its factual nature, for instance, it leaves the listener not knowing whether it's going to be done. If you say going to, that's definite. I see. Uh, let me ask you a question. Do you believe there should be billionaires in a society? <laughs> I'm just asking you that question as a conversation point. Yes, yeah. Mm, there <laughs> should be. Uh, I'm not sure. Like, we are, 
did you mean that should people hold like hold the money or hold the resource? Uh, I see. Okay. So, uh, I mean, um, in the reality, it's very hard to control to distribute all the resource and all the assets equally to every uh, person in the world. But uh, I don't believe that uh, uh, there should be billionaires or poor people like uh, the difference between that say North Korea people or, or, or like uh, the billionaires in even though that in Australia. Yeah, so uh, I don't know how it works. I, I don't know how we can distribute these resources and the money or assets to the old people. But uh, uh, in that say, I I don't I don't work like a, we we could call it like utopia. One thing you can do when you're talking about vocabulary, uh, you use the word resource. I think what you really mean, well, yeah, maybe you do mean resource. You could also use the word opportunity. There is that everyone should have the oppor equal opportunities. I got what you were saying. I think sometimes when it comes to vocabulary, of course, as a teacher, I always think you need to read more. Yes. And that's where you'll get your vocabulary. But also you might pay a little bit of attention to um, vocabulary forms. For instance, you said you think that um, it's very difficult, you told me, to control, to distribute. Wow. So what you'll find in a higher vocabulary is more nominalization, which means more nouns. I see. You know? So like, as I said, in that case, I'd say, um, it's very difficult for society to control the distribution of the wealth. It's just a slight change, it's subtle. Yeah, but when I listen to you, I can feel the difference. Like uh, you, you didn't restructure the, the sentence so much, but I didn't say something about society or distribution. Um, I think that's the difference, yeah. But actually your vocabulary is quite good. I know that you're fishing around for words a little bit, but that's okay. You, you're doing a good job there. Let me just mention too, a couple sounds. Your, your R is a little weak and your L is a little weak. Yes, okay. yeah. So can you say the word control? Control. Beautiful. <laughs> so, I can't really. <laughs> You're one of those students that is far enough along that you know how to make all the sounds probably. If you focus and your brain tells your body to actually do it. I know so, I don't, I couldn't say word, word. So it, I, I'm always confused with words and word, like the word. Oh, yeah, w O R L D. Yeah. I can't, I know that I can't say word. So, what Chinese speakers, of which you are, have a difficult time with, I mean, Chinese language speakers, is putting the L be curled behind the T like that and leaving it there for a while. Yeah. Also, the R, of course, because you have to curl, you have to curl the tongue back so far without yeah. touching the roof of the mouth. And of course that's difficult and takes practice. There's a very famous English teacher in China, Mr. Lee, who got people to speak English just by getting them to shout it, you know? Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. So you can uh -huh. use more breath, more breath. And at home you can just say world. Yeah. So wor world. Good. Sure. <laughs> more <laughs> breath, more breath. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. World. World. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. So already it's improving just by using more breath. I so see. Just try doing what I said. When you go to bed at night, say it 10 times. When you get up in the morning, say it another 10 times. And then during the day, your brain will just tell yourself to start correcting it and putting more emphasis in it. Yes. Yeah. You're a great student. You've got nothing to worry about. Bye-bye.